Alrighty, everyone, welcome back to Take Flight Garage. Welcome to episode three of the 944 build series. Uh, this one is going to be covering the braking setup that I've chosen to go with on the 944. Um, I'll get it out of the way right off the bat. This is not going to be an installation video, so these aren't going on the car in this video. That'll be at a later date. But um, I wanted to do an overhead piece just sort of covering your options. Um, if anyone is out there wanting to upgrade the brakes or uh, if yours are worn and it's time for replacement and you're looking at some options. So uh, first things first, let's start off with the hardware kits. Uh, this is from Dansk, same people that make that uh, really cool exhaust. Um, I only could get the front, so that's what I ordered. Pelican uh, usually stocks both of them, so keep an eye out. Um, it's always a good thing to just... While you're in there, just, you know, 16 bucks, get some new hardware. Um, so I'm really excited for that to be going on the car. Here's what I've chosen to go with. These are dimpled and slotted rotors. So typically when it comes to choosing brake rotors, you've got your bone stock, no thrills, vented disc rotors. You've got slotted rotors. You've got cross-drilled rotors. Like you got drilled and cross-drilled. And then you have uh, slotted and cross-drilled and et cetera, up to dimpled. So first off, why are these black? These aren't gonna stay black. This is just an anodized coating to help with uh, rust buildup, prevent rust buildup in the, um, in the divots and the slots. Uh, it's just uh, an extra option you can have. It's really primarily just cosmetic. While they're not on the car, it's going to prevent them from rusting, so. Just something I've chosen to go with, but uh, more importantly, why dimpled? So, cross drilled rotors. First off, of course, whatever you choose to do is going to depend on your use case, right? So, if you're tracking your car, you're going to want something that's going to be able to handle a lot of abuse, a lot of heat cycling, and um, wear resistance. Right, you want your, your brakes to get up to temp, but you don't want them to overheat and cause fading. Drilled rotors are a way to help dissipate that heat. So they allow any sort of surface that isn't going to be flush with the pad is going to allow for that. The gases that are built up during braking, uh, during that high temperature scenario, it's going to allow those gases to vent. So that does a couple things. It allows the heat to dissipate, that keeps the rotor cooler, it keeps the pad cooler, and um, it also keeps everything cleaner. And the edges allow for a little bit more bite into the pad. So cross-drilled and drilled rotors do a very good job at this. However, each one of those holes introduces an area of structural weakness. So think about it, over thousands of heat cycles, if your pads and rotors are getting really, real hot, uh, you you know you have a structural weak point, and if it doesn't happen on a macroscopic level, it'll happen microscopically, where the rotor will crack. So, I guess on a race car, if you're changing pads and rotors, you know, I guess if you're a multi-billion-dollar team and you're doing it m multiple times a race, it doesn't matter. But the idea here is. Pay attention to your use case and what you're using it for. If you're puttering around town, then drilled rotors look cool. Um, you're not really going to see all that performance benefit there because your rotors aren't going to be getting hot enough. Um, and now if you go on spirited drives or if you live in a hilly area and you're going up and down mountains, that sort of thing, then your pads and your rotors are going to get hot. So that's where you might want to look into either going with a cross-drilled or my personal choice preference is dimpled rotors because the dimpled rotors don't introduce structural weak points. So you get all the benefits of the outgassing, you get the uh, temperature benefits, but you don't introduce any structural weakness. So you get the pad bite and all the good stuff, but no structural weakness in your rotor. So that's why my personal choice is this. This car is not going to be tracked. It's not going to be autocrossed. But if I want to go on a spirited drive, I want to know that I can handle a little bit more abuse to my brakes and they're not going to uh, overheat and fade on me. So that's choice of rotors. Um, these particular rotors are from brakeperformance.com. 
Uh, it's up to you guys. If, if I get enough feedback and you guys want a link, I'll absolutely leave a link. Uh, the pricing is kind of weird. It always is fluctuating. Just make sure you don't ever pay like the full $800 for these breaks. Um, they typically have 55, 60% sales. Uh, so you can get, for example, I got fronts and rears along with the set of pads, which we'll talk about in a second for under $400. So that's my recommendation. If you're a track guy, go to go with Zimmer, Zimmerman pads or Zimmerman rotors and uh, Hawk pads. That's just tried and true stuff right there. Okay, so we've talked about rotors, benefits. We've kind of covered that. Let's talk about pads real quick. So these are fully ceramic pads. These are not an alloy. They're just 100% ceramic. Most performance that you're going to get is going to be out of a, um, a semi-metallic pad. So stuff that's infused. Um, it's not just a full metal pad, but uh, there's some filler material in the friction material. Um, those are going to give you the most performance, but they're going to be uh, the loudest and they're also going to generate a lot more brake dust. Ceramic pads are a lot more durable. They're quieter. They're more expensive. Um, however, for this use case, I want to keep my wheels clean and I still want a lot of solid braking performance. So they're a good middle ground for my use case. They're not going to be tracked um, and these are going to be plenty overkill for the type of uh, driving I do on the street. So that's why I'm going with this setup, this combination right here. It makes the most sense for the type of driving that I do. Again, if I were doing something like autocrossing or tracking, then I'd probably choose a different composition um, pad. But this is going to, it's going to be quieter and it's going to keep a lot of uh, brake dust off my rims, which is... Um, Especially with the Fuchs wheels, you really don't want that stuff sitting on your rims because it can contaminate the aluminum and, and that's how you get those stains and all that other kind of stuff if you're not on top of cleaning it. So ceramic pads, you can find um, your choice. Again, uh, Pelican, I believe R1 Concepts makes rotors for the 944, uh, Zimmerman. Um, yeah, those are some of the brands that I can think of off the top of my head. But just to kind of do your own research, apply your own thinking and you know if it's time to replace pads and rotors just you know think what kind of driving do i do uh etc if you don't do anything but just take your car to shows or anything like that then just you know it's not worth paying any extra money just stick with stock uh in this case if these aftermarket rotors are going to be comparable in price with um you know going with stock porsche pads and rotors then you, you might as well just get some get something aftermarket that's going to at least give you some added benefit so the idea here is that if you are in need of replacing something or if you're – if that time has come up for a certain area on your car, while you're in there, you might want to beef it up. So – but again, that's that's a philosophical debate that uh, I'm sure we can all have as, as far as do you want to keep it 100 percent bone stock, purely, truly original. Um, the whole point of this build series – here, let me spin around on the car here. The whole point of this build series is – you got a little bit of a budget. You can't go crazy with what you're doing to your car. So what do you do? Aside from those small performance um, things that we've done. So for example, we're st still getting the math situation figured out, but uh, giving your car a little bit of extra tuning uh, ability and OBD, which is huge for diagnosing something like this. If you're gonna be using it a lot, problems are gonna arise with a 40 year old car. So that's a worthwhile investment. A little bit of power never hurt anybody. But the best thing that you can do to modify a 944 that anyone will tell you, especially if it's the eight valve cars, it's brakes and suspension. Because that's just going to improve the driving dynamics, excuse me, driving dynamics and the handling characteristics. And it's just going to make it a more fun car. The 944, if you don't know, is 100% a momentum car. So it's not a fast car to go fast but it's a slow car that you can drive fast. And so having a good set of brakes on there, having some uh, solid suspension is going to just really add to how the car feels in the twisties, in the back roads, when you're autocrossing, whatever you're doing, day-to-day -day driving. It, um, that's where the 944 shines. So you wanna focus on braking and handling. The overall theme of this too is to not break the bank, right? So the idea here is for the brake setup, for the math, for the computer, 
you know, for around two to three thousand bucks, you can have yourself a really, really solid 944 on top of whatever you put down to buy the car in the first place. A lot of you out there are, are able to buy these cars well under the ten thousand dollar range. You can really find a decent car that needs some things here and there for around six to ten grand. You know, anything that you pay above that is going to be for essentially cosmetics. How well has the car been taken care of? Um, you know, how the, the condition of the paint has it been resprayed, etc. But a lot of the stuff that you don't see, the GTS ness in essence, is going to be the stuff that's sort of underneath brakes, suspension. So the whole idea here is that between brakes, suspension, and uh, some of those other upgrades for again for around three three grand on top of whatever you buy your car for you can spread all these purchases out and over time work on your car get comfortable with working on your car do some minor upgrades and you're not going to in that process destroy what you bought in the first place it's still going to be very 944 in what it is in its character so that's the whole point of the series uh excuse the rambling and the rant there at the end but i think a lot of you guys get it and so the last big thing for right now is going to be this brake conversion uh once we get the math situation sorted out so i'm really stoked on that and um yeah i'll dive in i'm chicken on doing the brakes i really don't want to do them i did them on my last car floating calipers calipers can just kind of be a, a little bit of a pain but if time allows it i'll get it done and i'll film it for you guys and um yeah, aside from doing just one sort of last detail, we'll do one big giant overview where we cover everything that we've gone over and um, we'll take the car out for a drive and uh, we'll really try to showcase some of this stuff. In the future, I think um, part two of this whole series is going to be uh, really tackling some of that suspension stuff. Um, and yeah, again, I'll save that for a more in-depth video on suspension, but uh, you don't you don't need full coilovers on these things. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this video informative. Um, just some food for thought. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.